I have a confession I want to make. And it's something that's been true for me for about the last 10 years. I don't like referring to myself as being a Christian. I don't like using that word about myself. And while I talk about this, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. You know, Christianity today is a mess. It's been hijacked by the religious right, the Christian conservatives, the evangelicals, and it's been twisted and turned into something that's hardly recognizable as authentic Christianity. You know, there's a political agenda that's part of evangelical Christianity today. It's an agenda that's rooted in white supremacy. It's anti-gay. It's anti-trans. It's anti-abortion. It's anti-a lot. And it's meant to really impact society in a way to change society based on some certain values. And it didn't just come out of anywhere. It's rooted in some deliberate decisions by a few key leaders. This Christian nationalism that we see today in, that's wedded with evangelical conservative Christianity was rooted in the thinking of some folks in the 1950s and 60s. The prominent person, the prominent energy behind this was Jerry Falwell. Most people don't know this, but Jerry Falwell was a counter-protester to Martin Luther King Jr. Jerry Falwell was actively against the civil rights movement. That's how white supremacy became part of this kind of evangelical conservatism. He brought it with him. And he looked at King and thought, if King and his folks are using their pulpits as ministers to organize people, then people like him needed to do the same thing. And so he began working with his congregation of 35 people and began to push this message that was based on people's fears and apprehensions. And the reason they became successful was they really pushed hard on what people were afraid of and built a series of lies on them. And they continue to do that today. I mean, one of the biggest fears that they push on is that some man is going to dress up as a woman and slip into a bathroom and take advantage of someone's children. Are there cases of this? I don't see them in the press. But they prey on fears and they build on them and they have amassed a lot of money and become very powerful in society with their agenda and have defined what Christianity really is supposed to be about. And I don't buy it. And I don't want to be part of that. Because for me to buy into that is to be, is to buy into a lot of deception and deceit, as well as everything else that has gone with it, the financial improprieties, as well as the sexual scandals that have been associated with conservative religion. Rather than calling myself a Christian, I prefer to call and think of myself as a follower of the teachings of Jesus. I understand that Jesus began his ministry stating that he came to bring good news to the poor, liberty to captives. He came to bring positive change in people's lives. The beginning of his ministry was all about healing. And as he was healing, he kept pointing to the, a reality that people really still struggle with, that the realm of God is within us. It's part of us, and it's to be found in our lives day to day. The ministry of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, were all about showing the face of God who is love. And scripture defines God as love. And the image of God presented by Jesus was one of unlimited, unconditional love for each and every person. And that's the teaching I want to follow. That makes sense to me. You know, the followers of Jesus were first called Christians in the town of Antioch in Greece. 
And why were they called that? They were called that because they showed such great love for others. That was the heart of Christian living. You know, it took a few centuries for the followers of Jesus to begin organizing religion and to making it what it became today. And when that happened in the third century, many people left the cities and towns where Christianity was being established and headed to remote places like the Sinai Desert because they wanted to cling to the teachings of Jesus and live it as best they could. They didn't want to be caught up in the establishment of organized religion. They got it. You know, when push comes to shove, the truth is that Jesus never came to build a church. Instead, Jesus called people to follow, to follow a way that was to lead to greater and greater life, to experience the fullness of life here and now. And that was the message of Jesus. And it was threatening to power structures, but that was his message. So that's what I cling to. That's what I want to base my life on. And I'm concerned about the power that Christian nationalism has taken in the United States and is exporting to other countries. It's divisive, it's harmful, it's oppressive to people, and it makes a few people rich. And they use that wealth from bilking people as a sign that God is somehow blessing them. But if you read the scriptures, the book that they worship but never seem to understand. It's the poor who are blessed. It's those who are in pain or who are blessed, not the wealthy. The wealthy are the ones who Jesus said are going to have a hard time entering the realm of God. So my friends, I may not be a good follower of Jesus. I need to be more generous. I need to be more kind. I need to be more gracious in my life, but I'm working on it. That's what I'm striving to do. And I wanted to share my confession so that you knew where I stood, because I think many other people struggle with this today. They struggle with what Christianity has become and don't recognize the, the churches that are out there as having anything to do with the teachings of Jesus. And indeed, there's a great dichotomy there. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others because this is an important issue. And know that I appreciate your time, your comments, and being here on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.